All right, let's, so give us your best guess at sort of the opening day. Now, obviously, I know there's a lot, lot to happen between now and then. But your opening day sort of starters at receiver sort of at each slot, what, how, how do you see it potentially? I, I think, you know, there's some questions about uh, Paul Richardson's health, um, you know, simply Still? because he missed almost all of last year. I, I, until you see it, until you see him go through it, you know, there's always going to be questions. And we haven't had that, that, uh, that open media session yet. Um, but from what I hear, he's coming along fine, and they are expecting him at some point this summer to be full go. I think they're going to take it easy with him early on. Um, so I, I think that he is going to be a starting receiver. I mean, in, in a lot of ways, you know, I was talking to Jay Gruden um, a few weeks ago. He's almost like a – they're looking at it almost like getting a free agent signing with Paul Richards. Right go last year. He got injured in training camp, um, uh, tried to play through the injury, suffered another injury early in the year. And then was IR. So, um, you know, I, I think that he's going to be a big uh, contributor. He'll be a starter. I think Doxton does win the job um, on the other side right out of the gate. Um, I think uh, Trey Quinn is probably going to be your starter at, um, at slot receiver. I, I know they, they're very high on him. Um, but, again, you know, with players, with young players, you gotta you got to see it too. you got to see that consistency over – over a number of weeks, but I would say those would be your three starting receivers right there. Mm. You know, one position we really haven't talked about since the draft, or you know, throughout the draft, is running back. Um, I know yeah. they, they they draft Bryce Love, but he probably won't be ready till the earliest middle of the season if he plays right. if he plays at all. But um, you know, they re-signed Peterson, but we're not really talking about guys. It's almost like he's a he was a free agent pickup or an extra draft pick. And he's an unknown at right. this point. He's an unknown. You just don't know. But you know, obviously he was a stud in college and um you know we've heard rumors that his his rehab has been he's behind schedule. I don't know if that's true or not, but um what what is your outlook for Geis? Uh what are you hearing on his rehab? Does he look good? And would you expect Geis to be um the opening day starter over Peterson or do you think Peterson would be? Yeah, I, that's certainly um, something we're at the monitor this summer. And I've heard the same things that you guys and other people in the media have heard about Geis' recovery, which is, you know, it, it was clearly set back from the infections early on, but maybe isn't exactly where it needs to be. Um, uh, that said, publicly the Redskins are saying he's going to be good to go uh, uh, come training camp. So, you know, it's another one of those things where you're going to have to kind of see it to, to in order to believe it. I think if he is 100%, uh, good to go. I think he's your your, your day one starter. Um, Adrian Peterson's gonna gonna play a whole lot, no doubt about it. Even at 34, he showed us last year he still got um, uh, still got some ability left. He still has some tread on those tires. Um, Chris Thompson is still gonna be a big factor. He'll still be your your third down back. And I think you're right. I, I, I think you know Bryce Love was a player that they drafted. Um, I don't want to say they're going to redshirt him necessarily, but there's no pressure, which is good for him and good for the team. There's no pressure for Bryce Love to get on the field at really at all in 2019 unless they run into injury problems, uh, which is good because that'll allow him to, to rehab the knee right and not rush anything back and be 100% for 2020. Because I don't know if you guys saw any uh, Stanford games. I mean, Love is a special, special player. And if you look at um, the fact that Chris Thompson is going to be an um, unrestricted free agent, um, at the end of this year, and again, like I said, Peterson's 34. Um, you can, or at least I can, envision ice and love and punch, and that would be really, really dangerous. All right, let's ask you the million-dollar question about Haskins. Um, All right. It kind of falls in their laps there at 15. You can't really argue with them picking him there. Uh, you never know with these first-round quarterbacks, but he seems to have as good a shot at any, at, at maybe potentially being a franchise guy for them. How slowly or how quickly do they bring him along? What is your best guess? Well, I, I mean, when you're drafted 15th overall, um, the expectation is that you are going to, at some point in your rookie season, get a chance to be a starter. But w as with everything with the Redskins, nothing is that simple. <laughs> um, you know, Jay Gruden is a coach who is coaching for his uh, for his life right now. I mean, he's got a, he had a tenuous grasp on this job. I mean, there were, there were times at the end of last year where, you know, when, when he told us at the end of the year that he wasn't really sure, he wasn't really sure that he was coming back. So um, uh, he's got to win now. So you've got a coach that's in win-now mode. You have management that is looking a few years down the road. Um, and so I, I think it's going to be a question of who wins out 
I mean, there's clearly going to be a battle there, but who wins out in terms of behind the scenes? Is it going to be the coach who has to win now? I think Case Keenum might give you the best chance to win weeks one, two, three, and four. Unless Haskins comes in and absorbs the playbook and through training camp, it's clear that he's the, the guy who won the competition. If, if, if that's the case, um, then you got to turn it over to Haskins because then you start ending up with blocker room issues because everyone saw, all the players saw who won that competition. you got to give it to who wins. But kind of projecting right now, I would have to imagine Keenum is going to be further along. Um, and, you know, there's some, still some questions about Colt McCoy. I'm hearing, you know, he's still, you know, battling that, that um, or not, not I shouldn't say battling, but he still isn't where he needs to be uh, after that third procedure on that broken leg from back in December. So there are, there's a possibility that even if he gets on the field at some point this summer to kind of get sharpened up a little bit for training camp, he's still going to be behind Keenum and Haskins. So I'm not even really, I mean, I know. I don't even think he factors in. I, Somebody told me that they had to re-break his leg, the third procedure. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a good chance that he's not even, like you said, not even going to factor into the competition. It's really going to be a two-man race. And then it's going to come down to who at Redskins Park, unless there's a clear winner. If it's one of those situations where, you know, uh, you know, Haskins looked a little better here, but Keenan looked a, bit, a little better there, you know, that, that's where it might get to who wins the, the battle behind, the, behind closed doors. Um if you're the Redskins, if you're a player, you just hope that whoever wins it wins it clearly and there's no questions because the last thing you want to do is go into a season where, let's say, um, there's some questions early on. Keenum, first two games, first time he throws three straight incompletions or an interception, everyone's calling for Haskins. Right. And now you're switching quarterback in the middle of the year because then you're talking about probably a lost year, right? And if you're Jay Gruden, you absolutely can't afford that. He has to win now. Right. He has to have this team in position to make the playoffs next year.